the request to rezone 11.6 acres at the end at the east located east of pageant road i'll be taking this out of madam chair are you going to do it from here or from i can do it from here no i'm good with you going from if, here. You, if okay. you want me to go out um, all right so chris is going to take this item for us so chris Madam Chair, this is a site that is to the east side of Padgett Road at the Spencer Lake Drive and Padgett Road intersection. It's an approximately 11.6 acre rezone request, which will be a request to rezone to a PUD from an A1 agricultural. Um, the comprehensive plan for this location indicates single family. Projected traffic impact. With a rezoning or with the rezoning to a PUD and developed at this property dense, uh, proposed density of 63 units, the development would generate an estimated 461 vehicle trips per day weekday. Current traffic counts um, is uh, 970 Paget Road, North Paget Road, and Prince at the uh, North Paget Road and Prince Street intersection. 760 for the Bay Hill Drive, west of Bay Hill Drive, and Hogan Lane intersection. The applicant's proposing a, approximately a 1.25 acre lot is being dedicated as a detention basin in an area known to back water up <clears throat> from, from the lake. Drainage calculations and design is a part of the preliminary plat process beyond the rezoning of the property. The applicant will be required to meet the City of Conway's drainage criteria manual requirements and other federal, state, and local laws and ordinances upon design of the facilities. The master street plan indicates that Paget Road is uh, designated as a minor arterial. The proposal includes an interior minor street network with a future street extension to the northeast of the development. Street improvements will be subject to application of the City of Conway codes during the preliminary plat development of this site. Preliminary development will be, in, uh, will be the internal street network, excuse me, primary development. Staff comments, the applicant was required to present the proposed planned unit development concept to the public at a public information meeting that was held on April the 27th of 2023. 84 of the people in, a, uh, in attendance indicated opposition to initial version of this proposal, which included 144 multifamily units, including 27 fiveplex and three triplex structures. The primary concerns at that time were related to drainage, wildlife, compatibility with surrounding neighborhoods, property values of surrounding neighborhoods, and traffic. Approximately 50% of those in attendance at the April 27th meeting indicated that a development density closer to the standard R1 requirements would be more appropriate. The applicant agreed to modify the proposal to address concerns from the community and agreed to a second meeting with the interested parties. The meeting, the second meeting was held on May 25th, 2023 with 33 people present, 31 of which indicated opposition to the revised proposal. The applicant revised the proposal to create a single family subdivision design, which is more compatible with the comprehensive plan, increased the detention area to accommodate concerns regarding water quality, drainage, and environmental considerations related to the lake, included a future stub out to the north to, pro to provide future traffic routes other than Paget Road, reserved a larger lot, 0.58 acre at the front of the subdivision to echo larger lot sizes to the west, and provided a pedestrian walkway to the north to allow students of Woodrow, Woodrow Cummins Elementary to use sidewalks further away from Paget Road. The applicant conducted the second meeting as a Q&A between the applicant and the audience. Concerns included water quality of the lake, detention, trash, sizes of homes, sizes of lots, the safety of the detention pond in proximity to the school, the size of the parking area in front of homes, on street parking, and traffic. The applicant met with staff following the May 25th meeting and agreed to increase the distance between the back of the sidewalk and the front of garages to 20 feet to better accommodate parking and agreed to include a safety bench around the detention pond to increase safety at the drainage facility. The proposal appears to meet the comprehensive plan at this location and demonstrates uh, terrain hardship requirements that are considered for a plan unit development submission. The applicant has made multiple revisions to decrease density and align with the comprehensive plan and adjustments to consider 
uh, and adjustments to consider public input. Staff recommends approval of the request with consideration of the following conditions. Recommended PUD development plan conditions include one, the PUD should, should be used for single family residential only. Two, all standards and uses other than those defined by the development plan shall be governed by restrictions of the R1 zoning district standard, excuse me, R1 zoning district. Three, the distance between the back of the sidewalk and the garage shall be no less than 20 feet. Four, the detention pond shall include a safety bench or an alternate method agreed upon by the city engineer and the applicant to improve safety considerations at the detention pond. Five, buildings shall be of the following materials. Brick, stone, cyber, excuse me, cement fiber board, hardy siding, wood, other materials as approved by the planning director. Number six, vinyl siding shall be prohibited. Seven, roofs shall have a pitch of eight over 12 or greater. Porches may have lesser pitch. Eight, roofs shall, only, <clears throat> shall be only of architectural shingles. Nine, no residential accessory structures shall be permitted on lots one through 62. 10, no fences in excess of four feet high shall be permit permitted in front yards. Any proposed fencing shall be approved by the planning director. 11, five foot sidewalks shall be required along both sides of the internal streets and link to existing sidewalk along Paget Road as shown on the site plan. 12, a paved side path must be installed connecting the development to the adjacent school to the north. 13, the PUD shall be generally developed per the density and intent indicated on the site plan. Minor variations from the approved plan may be allowed by approval from the planning director. 14, cladding shall be required. Any additional rights of way, sidewalks, etc., as required by the subdivision ordinance shall be dedicated and constructed. 15, lot 63 shall be labeled as unbuildable. Number 16, setbacks shall be as follows. Front, 15 feet. Interior, 5 feet. Exterior, 15 feet. Rear, 17.5 feet. Additional details such as utility and pedestrian easements, public right of way, etc., shall be defined in the final development plan, plat, and PUD documents. Thank you. Are there any questions for Chris? Not at this time. That will open it up to public hearing. Is the applicant present to speak in favor of this? Please state your name and address for the record. Landon Sanders. I'm at 306 Salem Road, Suite 106 in Conway. I'm here on behalf of the applicant. Mr. Paxson did a great job summarizing this, this project and what we've done. Uh, after two public information meetings and a meeting with the city, we have reduced the density uh, dramatically and completely changed this project to try to address the concerns of the neighbors. Uh, we went from a highly dense townhome project to a single family detached project that's on y'all's screen down here. Uh, we have addressed traffic and safety concerns and went from two curb cuts to one um, and, and provided a walk, walking path there to the north that will go from the uh, from that northern round of uh, the road there to the Woodrow Cummins Elementary School that's to the north of this project. And we have done everything we can to address all these traffic and safety issues, uh, to address wetland issues, um, all, all kinds of issues that have been uh, brought up by the neighbors. So uh, as Mr. Paxton said, we've got a detention or retention pond area there uh, with a safety bench or other appropriate uh, mechanism for safety purposes that could be provided there. And there's a sixth of an acre out parcel that would kind of provide a buffer between this uh, more dense project to the Paget project right there, or uh, the Paget Road there. Um, but other than that, uh, you, Mr. Paxton did a great job. I'm here to answer questions. I would point out that this project is actually less dense uh, in the maximum than the maximum units per acre that would be allowed <coughs> under R1. So. I believe this is consistent with the comprehensive growth plan. I think it's less dense than R1 would than, than would be permitted by R1 on a per piece of property. Uh, so uh, I'm here for questions if you guys have them. 
Could you um, provide some details on the optional pocket park deeded to the city? Yeah, that, that was discussed with the city. Um, so if, if we were going to deed that to the city, uh, that would be just something that, that the city could, that we could put in there. Uh, as far as like what that is, I'll defer that to Mr. Paxton or Mr. Pennington, but that would be a part of that detention pond area right there to the northwest, that big 1.25 acres or whatever it would be. Can I ask you to uncomfortably speak a little closer to the microphone? I think they've got it turned up as loud as they can. Okay, so. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so did y'all hear that? So pocket park on that northwest parcel there, and that is where the detention pond is. As far as what would go there, I mean, that would be between the city and the developer. That was just discussed with the city as a possible option. Um, and if that's something the city wants to do, then that's something we would do. Yes, Madam Chair, that that was a part of a discussion uh, that is a possibility. It would still be contingent on approval of uh, being deeded over to the city and it would have additional conversations with that during the preliminary plat process. Um, it was included in the this portion of the project as more of a, as a reference for in the future. What other questions do you guys have? So can you give me some more detail on what you mean by this PUD would be less dense than R1 because yep. the lot size is smaller? So. Yep, I sure can. Yes, the lot size is smaller. Uh, like I said, if there was a perfect piece of property, if you do the math on it, R1 requires 6,000 square foot lots. Uh, there's 43,560 square feet in an acre. That is 7.26 units an acre. And this rounds out at about 5.76. And so, because there's only 10.9 develop, uh, I think developmental uh, acreage there. And so if we did it by 11.6 acres, which is what we have it listed here, it'd actually be higher than a, a lower density than that. So uh, this is 5.76 in a perfect piece of property, 7.26 would be under R1, uh, but due to the terrain here and the unique topography of this project, that is not doable. And so uh, as far as like doing R1, and there's other reasons if you guys have read our, uh, our uh, letter from the developer to the, uh, to the planning department, uh, there's reasons in there for that as well. And that's attached in y'all's booklet. So, so have you have that engineered, like drawn out as an R1? Because I've asked this question and I can't seem to get no, we, we have an not. answer with regard to you're, roads, you're right. infrastructure, and other detention as related to R1. Yeah. And you're so right. the answer that I get from the planning staff is that it would be less units, mm -hmm. but that's not what I'm hearing from you. So you seem to have a different belief. So help me reconcile that. You're asking me if we've had it platted as R1? Well, we I'm just not. asking how, how it would be less dense because th that's I'm with Adam. It's that's just, the thing I can't it's reconcile. Just, it's just the mm -hmm. math. Uh, you know, you take the maximum square footage of of an acre divided by the maximum square footage of of an R1 property, which is 6,000 square feet, that's 7.26 units an acre. And these units are typically about 4290, uh, I believe, and that would, if you do that times 10.93, which is the, the area that could be developed here, that would be 5.76 units an acre. So are, are you, but are you taking into account that lot 63, which is stated here, is unbuildable in, mm -hmm. in the math? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I don't know if that is. Is that part of that, John? Yes, it is. Yep. Part of it. I have a question. You mentioned you, I know we all received all of the emails from the public, and a lot of the questions had yeah. to do with the lake, and you mentioned you've addressed wetland mm -hmm. issues and things like that. So what, what have you addressed, and what... Yep. Who have so, you discussed that with? Yeah, we did a preliminary wetland review that identified wetlands. And that was something that I'm glad the neighbors brought up, something that we hadn't addressed. And that is uh, going to have to be discussed between the developer and the Corps of Engineers and the EPA. And he's going to have to follow all city, state, and federal guidelines for wetlands. So that will either mean preserving or mitigating wetlands, and that is a months-long permitting process that is going to be a fluid process. I can't give you an answer as to what that's going to look like, other than it can't be anything uh, of a higher use than this. I mean, uh, it's just going to have to, he's going to have to comply with, uh, with the federal regulations as to wetlands. 
And also in regard, the other part of that is the 1.25 acre mm -hmm. um, detention basin. Yep. Currently, I'm very familiar with the area, the, the culverts or whatever that go under the road mm -hmm. that flow back and forth into the lake, like the runoff from the subdivision, will the will it still backflow into the lake? I mean, will that still be? Yeah, that's been a question that's been asked. And yeah, I mean, the, the water will be coming from the lake and, and into this pond. And uh, the bigger question is, you know, I, I think that the neighbors have had concerns about chemicals and mm -hmm. trash. Uh, sounds like they've already had a problem with chemicals and trash. We heard them talk about the lake has deteriorated and they pick up buckets and buckets of trash already. So. Uh, it's not our job. It's not, we're not wanting to make it dirtier. We're wanting to make well, it better. But yeah. as far as like the big thing right now is we want to make sure it's safe, and that's why we provided that that safety ledge, and that was something the city, I mean, uh, me and Mr. Paxton discussed, and that could be an option that or something else to make it a little bit safer for the neighbors and and children. But as far as uh, the water, yeah, it's, it's going to be going between uh, uh, the Spencer Lake. In that pond, just as it is now, but it'll be different. It'll but have there to won't be, be right. Yeah, it's just going to have it's going to have to be go go through the the city's drainage manual criteria. I believe it's going to have to comply with all of that. So, Mr. Paxton might be able to elaborate on that. Yes, Madam Chair. The uh, after this, this is a rezone. So after this goes through the rezone process, it still has to go through a rigorous review process. And part of that process is to go through our drainage criteria uh, manual. They'll submit a drainage report. They will submit any of their uh, additional requirements that are associated with our engineering requirements that are listed within our drainage criteria manual. They'll have to meet the uh, minimum standards of the City of Conway's drainage code. Thank you for that, Chris. Are there any other questions? Go ahead. Go ahead. I hit it. So the um, on page twenty, which I, I believe, and maybe this is the initial question for staff. So you know, I know staff's recommending this page <clears throat> twenty through twenty four, twenty five here. Right. Has that is that vetted by y'all, or is that all? Is every bit of that applicant submitted? We receive uh, the. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Oh, you're good. Go ahead. Uh, we do receive um, um, a, a letter of justification, a letter of interest from the from the representative. The pages that are labeled on starting on page twenty that says one of five, those are applicants submitted. Um, this is essentially the will detail. There's portions of it that will detail the requirements that they will have to follow uh, with the PUD. Uh, however, this is all information that comes directly from the applicant. So. Uh, this being a part of your staff report does not necessarily indicate staff agrees with each portion of this. There is a lot of information in here that does not pertain to staff's determination of a recommendation of approval. Uh, just because it's in this uh, request letter does not make it uh, a part of staff's recommendation of approval. It's, this is simply what they had submitted to us with their letter of recommendation. Excuse me. But the short answer to that is not vetted. Yeah, Mr. Bell, <laughs> that was prepared by our developer. and. Primarily, uh, all those issues were issues that were brought up in the public information meetings, and so those were why, that's why we addressed those issues in there. The others just more statistics of, and restrictions on the property. Okay. Hey. Any other questions from the commissioners? Not at this time. To be fair, I think you spoke for two or three minutes, and then we got into the question portion. Is there anything yeah. you you still have just a little bit of time? If there's anything you want to add, I want to be fair to you. No, I, I don't really have anything else to add. Uh, Mr. Paxton, like I said, did a great job. I would just like to point out that you know this is a PUD, which is to accomplish uh, zoning that traditional zoning otherwise wouldn't be capable of uh, accomplishing, and that's what we're doing here. We're providing a uh, different uh, type of housing, a uh, variety of housing on the west side of town. Uh, otherwise isn't there so um, just be mindful of that uh, and I appreciate you all of your time listening to us so thank you thank you all so right. much is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this all right seeing none, we will move to the opposition so is there anyone to speak in opposition 
Just as a reminder, the first speaker has 10 minutes. The two subsequent speakers have three minutes. Please state your name and address for the record, please. We won't start your timer until you get your handout done. Very good. Uh, Kevin Leach, 1505 Warwick Hills Lane. Um, I know this isn't supposed to be just based on if it's going to be rental or um, new families or retirees downsizing, but when they I put the article in the paper yesterday, the Democrat Gazette, it, uh, Mr. Pennington was quoted, we believe our community what is to thrive adequate uh, housing should be available for all walks of life, Pennington said. This includes our target market of young professionals, downsizing retirees, families who desire children to have convenient access to schools. Ivory Ridge seeks to address all of these groups by offering uh, smaller square footage in a highly sought after area. To achieve this goal, density per acre must be, must increase for the economics of this project. Uh, the proposed development is approved, if approved, will allow for the contracting of 62 family detached lots. Okay. So if, I mean, don't get me wrong, it, this is brilliant. For, if I was trying to make money, I would do it too. Okay. Mr. Pennington did a PUD in 2021, and I would like you all to see how many of those were sold to retirees downsizing. Zero. How many were sold to single families? Zero. There are 32 of them built, and 32 of them are owned by Mr. Pennington. Is that correct? Okay, it says 32, but maybe it's 30. And they're all owned by you, correct? Okay. Penny's LLC, which is owned by John Pennington, as you can see on the front page. Agent, incorporator, organizer, tax repair. Oh, it's not, sorry, his tax repair was Michelle Phillips. You get this all off of the internet, ArkansasDaily.com, wherever. So I own 23 rental properties, just to be fair. So I don't want you to think that I think tenants are bad because they're some of the best people in the, in the, the city. But I'm going to tell you, if he built 32, he owns 32, he's going to own 63 more. Okay. And the, the uh, pictures I took here are of his PUD over there. And there's about maybe 8 to 12 feet in between the backyards. Is that correct? Hey, Kevin, you'll have to keep your comments okay. to the commission okay. tonight. I'm just, well, I, I, I just thought maybe you would want me to ask him because I don't know for sure because yeah. I don't want to get on his property. But my question is, do you really think a new family is going to go in and not have a backyard if they're going to have kids? All right. That's one of my things. If you look at most of the backyards, they're about two or three feet and they're fenced in. That is not going to fit with what's over there already. These people saved their whole lives and bought five acre lots and built on these house, built on these lots. Okay, not just saying that it's based on their price going down or whatever, but I had twenty two houses that I bought from Pam McDowell Brooks or that we developed over on Wineberry. Okay, one night one of my uh, tenants had a heart attack. All right, when you get properties. And there's not enough room. We had two car garages, um, driveways where you could park three or four cars, and the emergency vehicle couldn't get down the street because they're parked on the street. And they had to drive through the yard. There's no yard here for them to drive through. I mean, if you look on the, the second page, that truck right there is pulled about this far from his garage door, and his tailgate's still hanging over the curb. If you look on the third page, that's why I'm bringing this up. There's a truck parked there. This is at 1.30 this afternoon. There's a truck there. The next car couldn't get in because if you don't drive and park exactly over on this side of it, the other car can't get in. And there's another car parked there. And this is at 1.30 in the afternoon. What do you think it's going to be? At 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night. You know, so um, the runoff from these streets, 
from you put all this concrete over there uh, with the, with a new subdivisions going in. I, I live over on Warwick on Tyler. We haven't addressed the streets over there. I think they're finally starting to do it. Um, but I've been there for seven years. They tell me it would be repaved, redone to take the traffic over there and, and, uh, and allow for the traffic. And it still hasn't been done. I called the city a couple of weeks ago and they said it might be two more years. Well, now I think they've maybe had, maybe have changed their mind, but there's not, there, there's no way that, that, that they can accommodate all this extra traffic. And this is too dense around the school, you know? So, um, like I said, what he's doing is brilliant. If you, if you're trying to make money, I get it because he found a loophole in the zoning or the whatever from the lot and was able to get this this passed or get it at least a meeting okay so um i'd like to ask who here is in opposition of this and how many are in favor of this and i just you know i think there's plenty of, of, of places in conway where this could be and it's you know if it was really for this it wouldn't have been zero or 32 or zero of 30 um sold so this right here is just a statement to kind of appease what was going on and what it, what they did before was pretty brilliant too if you come in you say i'm going to do 133 of these and you go back to 52 percent before we even had, had a discussion that night they'd already said Hey, we're going to revise this. We know it's not going to work. It kind of stinks a little bit. You know, the last meeting, I think um, everybody was a little bit um, disappointed in the numbers that showed up to oppose it, but you did it on a Thursday before Memorial Day where people are already headed to the lake. You know, everybody's going to take a four-day weekend. And I think you can see tonight that people are still pretty much in, in opposition to this. And so... Um, I just, I don't know. Have y'all had any emails in favor of this, or has everything been opposed? Are, are there any questions for Kevin on this? Got about two and a half minutes left. Are you good? I'm good. Um, I just, you know, I hope uh, this won't pass. I mean, there's lots and lots of people that that this affects. So, thank you for your time. Is there anyone else here to speak in opposition? I feel like I don't need to explain the rules to you this evening, sir. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Good evening. Would you like your chair back? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. Uh, Brandon Rule, 5720 Brush Creek Loop. I uh, appreciate all of you and your positions and your volunteering of your time. I've done my tenure behind that bench, and I know you have a challenging decision to make this evening. In my professional capacity as an architect, um, you know, I look at these cases day in and day out for my clients, and simply put, uh, I don't think it's appropriate. Uh, also, as a representative for the Spencer Mountain POA, we also disagree and don't think it's appropriate. Uh, all of the reasoning is behind you know, all the same comments that we've been through already. Um, there was some some excellent questions that you guys brought up just a minute ago, one of which uh, regarding the R1 uh, zoning possibility. So in a perfect world, you can get that many units. What was it? 7.26 per acre. Uh, if you've got a perfect piece of property that will allow you to put in the roads, put in the easements, put in all the additional things that you need. So typically getting to that number, you've got to have more property than what that'll allow. Um, so the fact of the matter is this is being requested as a PUD because the applicant cannot get the number of units that they need to put in there to get their return on investment. This could be a R1 application. This could be a simple single road with a cul-de-sac at the end and maybe 25 to 30 lots. It's feasible for that to fit it's just not as good of a number of uh, of units like like kevin was saying you know had this piece of property been larger north to south and then they could probably fit the loop road in there and 
get the required setbacks and things that are needed. But because of the size of the property and the amount of drainage that is traversing the property that's going to have to be dealt with, they're asking for this PUD and to maximize the number of units. Um, also a great question regarding the, the trueness of uh, that, that letter that was included in your packet. I just looked up one of those PUDs, the one that's just adjacent to this property that's actually not built, Spencer Mountain Condos. That property was approved at 30 units over 8.62 acres, which is actually 3.48 units per acre. And then there was a subsequent uh, phase that was also approved but never built, uh, which was nine units over 2.51 acres. So that's 3.58. So in, in any event, you know, it's not built, but there's, you know, it's hard to believe the truthfulness in the rest of those, those figures. Uh, I didn't pull any of the other ones to check, but that was the closest one. So I just looked at it really quickly. Um, so again, like, like I said, this is just too dense. And that's basically what it boils down to. You guys are making a decision about the use of the land. Thank you. Hang on just a second. We may have questions for you. You don't get off that easy. Does anyone have questions for Brandon this evening? Not yet. I do have a question on this, this, the question that Adam and I both asked, because I think it's an important one about the comment that it, the current request is less dense than the maximum units in R1. And I think that you were trying to address that and you got into that. And so um, when I've asked this, this question to the staff, um, certainly it would be less dense in R1, but I can't get an exact amount, number of lots that would be sold, that sort of thing. R1 lots require 6,000 acres. The current request require 4,290. Simple math tells me that that would be less units. Can right. you help us understand that? So yeah, it is less units. Um, but again, if, if it would have to be a perfect piece of property, right? Like I was mm -hmm. saying, if that was larger north to south, then there would be enough room for the roads to be implemented in there. Currently, we have to ask, or he is having to ask for, um, you know, reduced setbacks and smaller lots because he doesn't have the area to accommodate the R1. Uh, there would need to be, you know, you can't just fill up an entire property without roadways, easements, utility easements, drainage easements. There's a, a, a plethora of parameters that would fall effect on the property that would diminish that number. That makes sense. Thank you. I appreciate that. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to speak in opposition of this request? Stuart McConnell, uh, 5725 Brush Creek Loop. Uh, my family and I have owned the property across the street from where this development's wanting to happen. Uh, and we've got, of course, I put in Spencer Lake subdivision. Uh, and, and the lake, obviously, is, is ours. Um, I don't know if y'all are aware of what's happening at Conway, Lake Conway. If you've heard about what's, what they're doing and what's happened and what, when, why it's happening. Uh, they've had a lot of silt and runoff in Lake Conway, and they got a five-year plan to, um, to drain the lake and re rework it, redo it, do a lot of pretty big, pretty big project. Of course, the, they, they have uh, the game and fish and the government money back in their project where our lake, with the runoff we've had, I'm gonna say within the last 10 years, and we've, we've owned this property and this lake since 1981. And probably within the last 10 years with Centennial's growth and other developments, um, the, the shallowest part of our lake was probably waist high on me. And now it's probably ankle deep with all the silt that's run in there. And it's the same thing that's happened in Lake Conway. Uh, and, but the difference, like I said, is they've got game and fish and the government money to back them where I have only our family money once it's, once it's filled in that um, we'll, have to, we'll have to do something about. And not only that, it's gonna, it's, it's, it can cause flooding. I've got, 
you just have to see it. But I've it, it, it's so much so much silt and 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 trash has got into that that it's uh, it's uh, it's really gotten out of hand, and it's going to eventually this property, the lake, and you're not probably familiar with it, but the lake where it it dumps into the spillway that runs to the river, and so. One, once that lake gets so high that it's a shallow end, which is up where this development's going to happen, if it does, uh, that's, that's getting higher and higher, and it's going to cause some flooding in other places. So it's a big concern uh, for our family, for, you know, and I, you know, just with, and, and, and I know that they've said they're going by the state and city regulations on what they're going to do to prevent uh wastewater and trash getting in the lake they all say that and look where i am as an owner and so you know we'd like to keep this i know my time's up we'd like to keep this thing as pretty and as nice as we can as long as we can and and uh, not have to do that so are there any questions thank you thank you So it has been shared with me that the applicant has requested a rebuttal. Um, it has been quite a while since you've received quite a bit of comment this evening. You did not use all of your time. I am in agreement to allow three minutes um, for, for you to, to reply to that if you would like. Please state your name and address for the record, please. John Pennington, 306 Salem Road. I'm a managed member of Nichols LLC, which is the applicant. Um, I will address uh, Mr. Leach first. He provided this handout. He was referring to Marvin Garden Subdivision, which is owned by Penny's LLC. That is in our rental portfolio. We have 30 houses in there. Um, and one of the, I guess, problems that I had once that subdivision was developed was um, the setbacks were not big enough. I even shared this with staff when we came in to meet. The front setbacks are seven and a half, and the rear setbacks were 12 and a half, I think. I'm doing that from memory. So um, once that was built, um, city or, um, transportation department required a drainage swell in the back of those houses, uh, the majority of the houses, which took up even more space out of the backyard. So that, that I will agree that those backyards are not very large, and they actually are smaller than I ever intended them to be. Addressing this particular project, we are asking for larger setbacks than what we asked for in Marvin Gardens. This is a 17 and a half foot setback in the, in the rear. And I believe the, the current uh, uh, on your sheet, it showed 15, which I think originally I had asked for a little bit less than that, which is 12 and a half. But if 15 is fine, then 15 is acceptable to us. So the yards are not the same as Marvin Gardens. They are different. Um, as far as our target market, um, that goes to whether it's ownership or rental or, or whatever. That doesn't really come into play when you're dealing with land use. You, really, the decision before this body and then the further the council is, is this appropriate use for the land? And I know it is a unique situation with the PUD and the reduced setbacks. But this is not setting a precedent. There is a development on Irby uh, that was done by Mr. Watson. It has reduced setbacks. Um, Marvin Gardens have reduced setbacks. Bell Valley Phase 5, Mr. Shaw spoke to you all a couple months ago. It has reduced setbacks. So what you're seeing from a developer's perspective is if we're going to try to provide more affordable housing, which is a smaller unit in town, you're going to have to start seeing some of these reduced setbacks. That's just how the economics play out. I mean, we, that's just it. That's just, that's really the basis of this project. So uh, I just wanted to address that directly. I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you for that. Are there any questions from the commission? I do have a question sure. with regard to the staff recommendations and the, <clears throat> um, the one through 16, I assume that you've read them. Are you in agreement with all of those? Yes, yes. Definitely, yeah, we agree to all of those. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. 
So with that, I will bring it back into commission for discussion. Um, I think that this deserves the thoughtful consideration of the com commission, and I certainly want us to give it its due diligence this evening. I will just tell the commissioners we will take a voice vote on this one. So, what say you, commissioners? I'll go first. Um, so I definitely want to hear what everybody else has to say. Um, and I also want to say I appreciate all the comments that were made. I certainly got nervous when I walked in here that we were going to have a chaotic meeting and think everybody used their time very well. Um, so that's great. Uh, but after hearing it all, I'm, I'm definitely against it. Um, I very much respect staff's recommendation, uh, and I put a lot of weight um, into their recommendation. Uh, but this one's different. Um, boils down to a couple reasons for me. One, been on the commission two years. We've made a lot of important, impactful decisions, and we've never seen feedback and concern and pushback like this. The room's been full, but not this full, not to mention the hundreds of emails we've gotten over the past few months. Um, that alone is certainly no reason to vote no. Uh, we have made plenty of unpopular decisions uh, on this group, some recently. Uh, but when you pair that with what I feel are valid points um, about the lake, uh, the potential wetlands, the proximity to Woodrow Cummins, the safety concerns that are there, the increased density. It's just, it's not something that I feel we should be supporting. So that's where I'm at on it, but certainly want to hear where everybody else is. Thanks, Adam. Let me go. Sure. sure. Yeah, um, I, I agree with Adam on that. Um, it's just kind of to the point to where it looks like all of it is A1 over there. I'm not sure how far that goes out, but once, you know, one domino falls, the rest will fall with it. When will it stop with this? I'm not really sure the uh, what was mentioned that they got past a uh, restriction. I'm, I'm not sure what that is, but it seems like that just this would make the west side of Conway kind of go in towards a bad direction. Um, so R1 right there would be great, but yeah, this just, um, it seems like it's just not in the right location for it. I'll go. Um, I had a question. Go ahead. <clears throat> First about your comment. When you said make West Conway go bad, can you clarify that? Are you talking about density of the... I'm talking about just right there next to those schools. I'm, when the density of this gets passed, I mean, right around those schools, when will it stop with it? So that's kind of what worries me. Um, you know, I've been over there and stuff, and it's mostly just larger lots and stuff, and it just seems out of place for me. Um, you know, if this was something off Dave Ward Drive, sure, fine. But just over there, it just seems, it, it seems like this will open the gates for more of this, and I just don't think that's the appropriate area. That's a good question, Letitia. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like you got your answer? Lori. Um, agree with Adam. Um, I just, obviously, I agree with Kevin Leach. This is a great plan. I just don't think this is the right spot for it. And my concerns are a little different. And um, two, I want to say two positive things. I think the revision of the plan was much better. I think single family is, I don't think any of us would have considered anything else. Um, but I did some research, too, in the surrounding neighborhoods with um, lot sizes and even similar homes with 1,300 square feet. Um, there is nothing over there with that lot size. So I still feel the density is, it's, it's too much. And then beyond that, um, my concern is the lake because I don't feel like we've gotten clear answers on anyone with knowledge who may have done some research on what 60 homes draining into that. And again, I even drove back out there. And just so you all know, the public, we read all of your emails and we drive to sites and we look at things. And so, and when you see us up here, we're not using our phone for other reasons. We're, we have notes in our phone. We have um, different things we're looking at. But I did take notes so I would remember, you know, everything to say. But the Spencer Lake situation to me is a big concern, and I feel like it has been asked and re-asked um, by the public, and then I don't feel like we've had any expert, unless I'm missing it in the response, we have not had an expert opinion on what 
the increase of drainage. And again, when you drive over that, it's clear to see it's going to flow back and forth unless it, then that's why I asked the question, is it, is it going to be moved somewhere different or will it drain into there? And I, I think the concerns we've already heard um, with what is happening, um, I'm just, I'm not comfortable. Um, I want growth for our city. I want development and I want new homes. We need them. I sell them. I want us to have new homes in this city because I know people are waiting and wanting homes. So I kind of come from a different opinion. I, I would want this if it was the right fit, but I just don't think um, this is the right fit. And again, looking at Chestnut Meadows, Brownstone, and Sterling Court, who all have properties of similar square footage, I just think we are making a big jump um, decreasing the square footage of the lot size, um, you know. So that's my my thoughts. Thank you, Laura. I also appreciate your comments about the cell phone. Yes, just so everybody knows, we get the packets emailed to us, right? They're not delivered to our homes anymore on our doorsteps. So for for so we have to reference that this way. I still get my paper, but nonetheless, okay. Anybody else? I know. I do have a question for you, Chris. So on the last PUD that we approved, <coughs> a reduced setback uh, last month, I believe, um, remind me how those lots compare in size to these lots. So these lots, I believe, are uh, 55 by 78. Mm -hmm. um, so 55 by 78, the previous approval was, I believe, 5,500 square foot, or excuse me, four, uh, yes, 5,500 square foot lots, approximately the majority of them were. They varied in sizes, but I think that we reduced the lot size by about 500 uh, square feet um, in that subdivision right. compared to this one. So as I said, think about this, obviously. Microphone. So, sorry. Mm -hmm. You know, and this, this has been one that, you know, we've mulled over because it was on, on an agenda and it came off an agenda. Um, you know, obviously the original proposal doesn't match the surrounding area. Um, if it's a Dollar General going in, it doesn't match the surrounding area. Um, you know, we are talking single-family homes here. Um, in other areas of the city, we have approved similar items. Um, and so it's surrounded by homes, single-family homes. Um, so I'm probably going to be the unpopular guy here that I think it, it does fit because it is single-family. It's a similar land use. Um, regardless, it's not our job to determine drainage, it's not our job to determine roads, it's not our job to determine um, whether they're going to rent them or sell them. Um, it's strictly the use of the property, and they're being used as single-family homes. Um, so I, I do feel, you know, that the land is consistent with that use. Thank you, Ethan. That was kind of my question, because I know that the staff said that some of the input, you know, like, but I know that you take the applicant's input to give a suggested motion just to help us, you know, get through the items quickly. But usually, if there is something that is um, not conforming to what we've done in the past, my sample motion would be the opposite. But it sounded like the planning staff was in support of what the applicant submitted. And I, I, I live in West Conway, I get it. <laughs> but it's a tough decision because I'm listening to Ethan and I agree with all the bullet points match the appropriate zoning and land use. I don't know what the Pennington plan to do or what, but it's kind of out of, so hopefully there's another step or level that addresses that because we just I usually depend on what you guys say and I didn't have any questions about this one because it it all lined up so I think those are but I, I completely respect the mm -hmm. uh, members of our city and I, I get it it, it makes sense yeah so I just maybe some my thoughts there I, I completely agree that that rental non-rental we have no say in that nor should we uh, so I agree with Ethan there, but I do think it's our job to look at the land use and how that will impact the surrounding areas, which I think a lot of the concerns we heard are, are that and, and not the, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, the density, because uh, I, I kept listening to you say that, I was like, okay, I get that. 
and and it probably could be less. I just I just want us to be consistent in all areas that we take the same stance on mm-hmm. density in all areas of town, and we have so, not done that. And it, so. Again, this is just my thoughts, but PUDs are pursued because there's a unique yes. situation. Mm-hmm. And so the precedence, we, there should be no precedence that we've set on previously approved PUDs because this one is unique and has its own complexities. And we heard about a lot of them tonight. Uh, you know, I saw in the packet all the other PUDs that have been approved. To me, that's irrelevant. Um, we need to look at this one and the impacts mm-hmm. that it has. And I still have not and maybe this is a staff i mean i still have not gotten the answer why r1 i mean do y'all feel that way i still haven't gotten a good answer why it would not have been considered for r1 and i've still not gotten the answer of how that changes significantly other than the density which i am concerned about so i have that same question maybe we can come back to that i don't know if mark drew or alexander have any comments here, but I, I do want to come back to mm-hmm. that. I, yeah, I, I, I'm trying to work this into a question. I don't know that I have it. I have a concern for an understanding that at some point we are going to run out of affordable housing. And don't hear me say mm-hmm. low-income housing. Affordable housing and low-income are not the same thing. And I, I imagine inventory is very low in anything under 250 right now. Mm. And Zero. if we say that we're going to continue growing as a city, I do agree with either Mr. Sanders, Mr. Penning, one of them mentioned, like, at some point, it means smaller lot sizes. Now, I, now but I'm not, I'm not talking about the land use thing here. I'm talking specifically about we have to consider what's affordable to continue the growth of the city because we want to keep attracting all kinds of people to Conway. In all areas of town, In all areas of town that's yes, right. Yes, agreed. Mark, Alexander. Mayor, my comments mirror Adams. I... Do not believe this is a good fit for West Conway. I was born and raised in West Conway. I've been in West Conway my whole life. I think that this development will change the overall aesthetic of the area if you've been out there um, at all in the last few years, especially during school hours. Um, you can see the infrastructure in the area is not able to support what is currently out there. Mm-hmm. Um, you go, you add additional two, three, four hundred, four hundred um, car trips a day out there. Um, the danger that that poses to the children at the school um, is deeply concerning to me. Um, you know, I've been on this commission for going on two years now. We make a lot of decisions. There's a lot of important decisions that happen up here. Very rarely it, does the public come out in opposition of an item like this in this size. Um, I don't take that lightly. I don't think any of us on this commission take that lightly. Um, so with that, I'm, I'm against this. Thank you. I would echo Lori's thoughts. I mean, I think it's a good idea. This is something that would... Microphone, sorry. I think this is something that would benefit Conway. I just don't think this is the right area for this type of development. So maybe we can address this this question of R1, because I, I have marked this in my, did you have another comment? So I don't know if staff can respond to this, but bullet point two says that approximately 50% of those in attendance at the April 27th meeting, and I think that was 33 people, of which 31 were against, so that's 94% of the people were against it, indicated that the development density closer to R1 standard requirements would be more appropriate. So I think help us reconcile if 94% of the people were against it, but 50% of the people at the second meeting could get more on board with R1, why was that not considered? So th- that reference is the original proposal had 27, five, uh, and I believe it's in the staff report if I misquote this, it's 27 fiveplexes and three triplexes. Um, so the reference to the R1 zoning was moving towards that. So it would be moving towards the single family residential. So what we were presented, a PUD is typically has a unique circumstance to reduce some of the lot size. In this case, they increased the size of the detention pond area to 1.25 acres. Uh, Typically when they make that type of concession with a PUD, they request a smaller lot for the uh, remaining lots. And it's nature, it's still a single family residential neighborhood. Uh, and generally conforms to that single family, uh, similar to R1, but a little bit smaller of lots. Um, 
it's also worth noting that the on R1 zoning, it's uh, 6,000 square feet. Those the the 60 by 100 lots. The difference being 55 by 78. Yeah, which is like 42 something. I have it. 4290. And that move to R1 that would also decrease the density considerably from where it is and where it started. Uh, Madam Chair, it is correct that once you uh, start dedicating right of way, it does start um, impacting the um, the overall allowed amount of uh, units per acre. So uh, in this case, it's impossible for us to tell without having the street plan shown to us how how that would affect it because there's an endless amount of ways to set up lots within this type of uh, within this type of property. Um, however, you take into consideration the wetlands, you can still reduce the size of that 1.25 acres. The 1.25 acre lot is not set in stone. It's going to be based off of a delineation. So the delineation should determine the should determine the outline of your uh, wetland, and, and you can get additional core permits and make changes to those areas as long as it gets approved by the core. So once those changes get made, it has to meet our drainage criteria manual. They have to go through the appropriate permitting. It's impossible for us to tell how many acres of buildable space there would be remaining. Chris, when they hired you for this job, they didn't tell you that telling the future was going to be part of their that job requirements? They didn't tell you that? Mm -hmm. Lori, does that answer your question? It, Somewhat. Yeah. I mean, it's better, but I, I still, I guess when the, when the public left that meeting and they said they would consider R1, and then we're not seeing that. I guess I'm just, I just don't know where the... Um, where, where the lapse was in that, or, or maybe there was a conversation we weren't a part of that. It's, yeah, I mean, I, I think all the questions about R1 are good, and it's certainly, I had the same questions, but the PUD is in front of us, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, it, you know, R1 wasn't pursued, so I, yeah. We're here to talk about the PUD, not the R1. I think it's I think that's right. I think it's a good discussion to give a little bit of time to because it has been in the over 60 emails that we have received. And I will say um, I have reserved my comments for the end. So I don't know if there's anyone else. Um, I think yes. this is three years on the Planning Commission, something like that. It feels like a lot more right now. Um, in my time, we have not received for ever any other thing that we've been asked to consider. If you take all of the emails combined, it does not overcome the number of emails that we received of number of people that are not for this. And I think what makes this city so special is when people can come together and work out their differences, we get something really, really cool and unique. And I, and I just don't think that we are there right now. And so for that reason, for everything that has been said for density, I, I too will vote against this. So. So if we're good, I will, I'm willing to make a motion when you're ready. Yeah, we, this is where we have to get. Would you like me to make it so the yes means yes and the no means no? Yes. Sure. Thank you. Okay. So. I'll make it easy on everybody. <laughs> so I move to accept the staff recommendation to approve the rezoning request on the basis that it will allow for appropriate use of the property and will not likely impact negatively impact adjacent property. I have a motion to accept, accept the staff recommendation. It needs a second just for us to vote on it. Correct. It does need a second. I will second it. I have a motion from Ethan and a second from Drew. I'm going to do a voice, voice vote on this. I'm going to start over here. Somebody's counting for me. I've got it. No, okay. I think that's those yes, two. both. That'll be great. Okay, Jensen. And to be clear, no is no is no. No, no is no. Okay, mm. gotcha. Just want to make sure. No. Lori. No. Ethan. Yes. Letitia. Adam. No. Mark. No. Drew. No. Alexander. No. I too vote no. Somebody give me a count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, no. One abstention, one absence. Is that what you get, Lauren? Beth? There was a yes, wasn't there? there was Sorry, Ethan, Ethan was the yes. Okay, I'm sorry. yeah. So what are my numbers again, just so we got it out loud? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven opposed, one abstention, one absence. One in favor. One in favor. Okay. With that, the motion fails this evening. I, d I do want to thank everybody for the decorum tonight, how efficiently and effectively time was used, and, and, and the conversation around this. We do 
consider very difficult topics here. And, and thank you for making it go the way that it went.